Hello YouTubers, this is Soran again. I'm here to do another IT video for you. Uh, today we're going to be doing open SSH using IPv6. Uh, we're, today we're going to be doing this on the Ubuntu server uh, from the command line so you can kind of see what we're doing. Of course you can kind of use this through PuTTY but you have to kind of modify certain things. I already have uh, two uh, linked VMs set up here so I'm just going to go ahead and start the server up. Uh, this res this one I'm setting up here receives SS open SSH or just normal SSH is it you know, just for brevity's sake here. Uh, it you receives SSH uh, ports, and this next one I'm gonna set up here uh, start up here is what I will use as a client to connect to the server. Okay, as you can see here, the server is online. I really don't need to have uh, as you saw from my previous video I did create them out of virtual linked clones so as you notice with the with the link clone you always want to leave the base off you never want to run that at the same time as your link as your uh, linked clones uh, there's a reason for that I just can't go into it at the moment now I'm gonna go ahead and log into the server because I need some infor information from it Okay, first I'm going to do an IF config. And as you can see, the uh, OpenSSH server has several IPv6 addresses. The one I want here, because I'm uh, running from virtual machine to virtual machine, is I'm going to need the link local, which is the first one up here. It's usually going to start with an FE80A00 uh, something. Uh, so that's what for VirtualBox anyway. That's what I've over, uh, noticed. Not just on this for, uh, my desktop here, but ones I use at work. Uh, they just tend to always start out with FE80. Uh, these other ones here are for global. So you would probably need these if you were trying to connect by, by SSH IPv6 on a re remote server somewhere. Now I'm going to go ahead and log into my uh, client machine here. Okay, so I'm in my client. Uh, this does not have the server running over here on the right hand side. The left hand side is the server that's running. Okay, let me see if I can reside that. Okay, now with normal SSH, you would just uh, specify the IP address. In this case, uh, it's 10.0.2.16. It's whatever that VirtualBox assigns to you uh, if you're using a NAT type function like I am. Go ahead and say yes. Okay, and as you can see, the prompt changes to the same name as the one that's on the left. This indicates I've logged into the server, but this is how you normally do SSH. It's just that's by IPv4. Now, if you go ahead and type in dash four, it forces a uh, forces it to use IPv4 by default. Now we're going to also add in a dash L and my name. Uh, what that dash L means is for login. So you can actually specify a login. So all it, it immediately just asks for your password. Instead of asking which person to sign in as, it automatically knows. Okay, so we're back into the server. Let me get back out. So we're now in the client. Now, so what's the trick with at open S or uh, I'm sorry, with SSH six? Well, if you use SSH six and specify an IPv4 address, it's not going to work. Uh, it's because they're they're two different addressing schemes. Now you would think, okay, let's go ahead and just type in the IPv6 address, which is where a lot of people are having some problems with. FEA four fifty two six six. Now you would think, okay, let's go ahead and try it this way. It should work, right? No, uh, it's because it actually needs an interface to, uh, this is what kind of drove me nuts when I was trying to connect via IPv6 on SSH to a server or anything like that. This would seem intuitive to go ahead and use this to try to connect, but why doesn't it work? It took me a long time to figure out why, and I finally do have it to, uh, gotten it to work. Uh, it's like one specific website that kind of tells you if you search hard enough for it, it'll tell you. But basically what you have to do is type in a percent symbol, ETH0, for the interface you actually want to use. Now you're able to connect. It's going to ask, do you want to go ahead and save the fingerprint for it? 
and again go ahead and type in your password yeah, of course I never type in my password right most of the time but as you can see here from the previous prompts it's now connecting by the IPv6 address instead of the IPv4 that was up here okay I hope this uh, video uh, helped you guys a lot regarding that now as to the reasons you want to go ahead and use IPv4 versus IPv6 yes IPv4 is just slightly more uh, secure than IPv6 right now but that's only in the interim until people start using it uh, I'm mostly doing the IPv6 thing because there's tons of addresses out there obviously uh, I'm doing this for mostly practice uh, to get used to using IPv6 as you can see here just on the IPv6 information looking at the server the first 64 bits here uh, are, are the network address the last six I believe no no I believe these last uh, two sections here are like the the network address in virtual box terms anyway for the uh, for the net that we're at in any case I have my own reasons for connecting for I by IP z6 like I said it's just mostly practice to get used to using it now I hope this video has helped you guys a lot uh, how to connect using IPv6 to just SSH or just to use IPv6 in general uh, this also kind of works for web browsers uh, the only other thing you might have a problem with is if you're using it by let's see then I just type that in Oh, you're gonna make me type in that whole thing again, okay? <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, let's say if you're connecting by uh, by a web browser, I'm just gonna go and type this in on the client side, right here on the right, just so you can see, have an idea what I'm talking about. Let's say if you're using a home network and you have an Apache server set up, most of the time you're just gonna type in the uh, web server's IP address. Normally, it would just say, we'll just use a random number here let's say 49 uh, as an address so we just put that in your browser and automatically takes you there well if you're using IPv6 you would have to actually add in these brackets here so let's say FEA80 or FE80 double colon A00 okay let's just go ahead and put in a bunch of stuff here because you don't want to see the rest of it uh, but basically you would think to go ahead and do that and it actually kind of works like SSH it does not work like that you actually have to do a couple extra things as well what you have to do is right after the f the last slash for F HCDP let's put a left bracket to, I'm gonna go ahead and expand that so you can see that so it's a little bracket that points the left I guess put in your oop, sorry put in your IPv6 address again put in eth0 or whatever interface your uh, server is running on. S this thing over here sometimes if you get a weird card it'll show something else uh, I know my XBMC server has a weird one uh, it's like ATH0 or like an Atheros but it's kind of a different it's definitely not a t it's not an Atheros that's in there is something else it just shows up weird instead of ETH0 but in any case we're going to have put in the left bracket put in your IPv6 address ETH0 percent symbol ETH0 put in the right bracket and that should take you there by IPv6 address if you were doing it that way instead of by a DNS or normal you know uh, internet surfing now if you were using this to let's say use it uh, using IPv6 to connect to FTP this is where the port number actually comes in handy the reason you put those brackets in is so that it interprets that IPv6 address first then you add a colon and let's say 21 to use FTP so let's say if we're changing from HTTP to FTP that to uh, what we have here whatever you put in for your IPv6 address colon 21 uh, by default, FTP is going to be using 21, so you don't really need that. But let's say if you're running your ser your own FTP server, and let's say if you want to, and you for safety's sake, you use decide to use port 9100. Well, that's how you would connect to it like that. All right. Well, I hope this video has been very informative for you and might uh, help you out regarding your open SSH or IPv6 efforts to connect to other services. Uh, these are little tidbits I've run across the internet, and I haven't found an easy to use thing, uh, easy to uh, way to describe them, or rather. Uh, 
way to learn them until I decided to make this video just to you know put it out there uh, hopefully people won't have a hard time locating the information like I did uh, with this being on YouTube it should be a lot easier to find well anyway thanks for watching my video if you have any comment uh, if you have any suggestions or comments please leave them on my video thanks for watching